Hi, it's Ben from Digital Mastery and Masters Academy. And this time we're gonna take a look at how to remove tourists in your travel photographs. So let's dive in and take a look. Here's the scene and I can't get it without people. Doesn't matter how long I stand there. If I keep shooting, people keep coming in. When one leaves, another enters. So how can I go through this scene and get all the people to disappear? Well, the first thing you gotta know is to think about shooting. When you're shooting a scene like this, what I do is on my camera, I get it framed up just the way I like and I get at least one good shot that has the framing more perfected. And therefore I know I have the right amount of sky, I have the right amount of information on the sides and the bottom. Then on my camera, there's usually a button on the back. It's usually called AEL, that's Auto Exposure Lock. Different cameras might call it something different, but in general, I try to stab that button in. And that means lock the exposure so it's not gonna change my uh, aperture setting or my shutter speed. And therefore, if that's locked in, the brightness of each shot should be the same. And therefore, it'll be easy to combine multiple images because that's what we're gonna do. Uh, and ideally, I would lock the focus as well, but I'm usually pretty lazy about that. It all depends on how my camera's set up. Sometimes I have another button that locks focus. But then I'll take one shot and I'll watch the people that are in the scene and I'll wait for them to move. And if they've moved a significant distance, I'll take another picture. And I'll simply repeat that process until I have six, seven, or eight uh, pictures. And it all depends how quickly people are moving. If I find people are just hanging out, staring at their phone, I might need to stay in there for a while. But oftentimes I can do this in just a couple minutes. Then let me show you how to both adjust and combine those images to somehow remove the people. Here we go. So in this particular situation, let me take a look at the shots we ended up with. Well, if you look at this and I cycle through them, Notice the framing of the shot and notice it is not consistent and that's because I'm not on a tripod and that's fine as long as you're not stepping into the scene or moving far left and far right. If all you're doing is swinging your camera slightly, you're fine by shooting handheld. Then if I want to adjust these pictures, because they're probably going to look kind of dull when they first come out on camera, what I would do is select all. Now, if I'm here in Lightroom, I just type Command A, that's Control A in Windows, and then I can go up here to the top of my screen and go to the Develop module. When you're in the Develop module of Lightroom, down at the bottom is a checkbox called Auto Sync. You need to make sure that little checkbox is turned on. If, on the other hand, you're using Adobe Camera Raw, you can still select multiple images and open them in Camera Raw. And then you simply have to type Command A. Control A in Windows, which means select all. Then any adjustments that you make will apply to all the pictures. Whereas in Lightroom, it's that checkbox at the bottom I showed you a second ago that's called Auto Sync, which means apply to all the images that are currently selected. So I have Auto Sync turned on. And now I can optimize this image. If I think it's a little too dark, I can bring my exposure up. I can do whatever it is that's needed. But whatever changes I make, because Auto Sync is turned on, should apply to all of the images. Now, there is a little bit of an exception to that. If you're using the new masking features, that means you go to this icon right up here and click, you might come in and tell it to do something like select the sky. And in this case, I did have it select the sky and I lowered the exposure the slightest bit. If you do that when you're working on more than one picture, you're gonna to need to do an extra step. And the same would be true if you're in Adobe Camera Raw. And this is only if you know how to use the new masking features and you told it to create a new mask and you told it to either select the subject or the sky. Then here's the extra step you need to do. Well, if you've done that to one image, and then what I would do is switch to a different picture, like this one. Head back into the develop module head back into your masking tool. And if you use the select sky or select subject choice, you're gonna find an option down here that says to update it. It's not showing up now because I've already updated this. 
but that makes it so it makes a fresh look at where the sky is and it makes a new mask because I wasn't on a tripod and my camera was moving a little bit between these shots. So you'd have to do that for each and every single one of these if and only if you used either select sky or select subject. Now, if you didn't lock your exposure, if instead you're on auto exposure and you're pointing your camera slightly different angles, the brightness of these shots could be slightly different. So there is a bonus feature in Lightroom where if your exposures are slightly different and you've already adjusted at least one picture, here's how you can get the other pictures to match in brightness. Let's just say that this is the image that I've already adjusted and I've gotten the brightness to look just the way I want. But when I look through the other images, I notice they're a little bit different. And that's because I had auto exposure turned on and I didn't lock in the exposure. Well, what I would do is select the other images. I'm going to click on this image, hold shift and click on the last one. Then you'll notice that one of the images is more selected than the others. This one has a brighter background. I would then click not on the border around the picture, but on the picture itself for whichever image you've adjusted and you've optimized the brightness. Then you can go to the photo menu and within that menu, you're going to find a choice called develop settings. And there you're going to find a choice called match total exposures. And what that does is it ends up looking at the most selected image. That's the one with the brightest surrounding around it. It evaluates the brightness of that picture and adjusts all the other images you have selected so the brightness should be as close as it can to matching. And therefore, even if you didn't have auto exposure locked where it's not shifting, you can get the brightness of the images to be pretty darn close to the same. Now that feature is not available that I know of in Adobe Camera Raw. So that's something unique to Lightroom. But now that we've adjusted these pictures, let's start trying to get rid of the people. And to do that, we need to head to Photoshop. I have all these images selected. I'm going to go up here to the photo menu. I'm going to choose edit in, and I'm going to tell it to open it as layers in Photoshop. Now there's a similar choice if you use bridge for those of you that don't use Lightroom. And that's known as selecting all the images and you go up to the tools menu. You choose Photoshop as a sub menu, and then you're going to find an almost identical choice, which would open all those images as separate layers in Photoshop. And I'm going to do that right now. So while I'm blobbing, blabbing, uh, it will hopefully stack those images. Now, the idea is that we've captured enough images and weighted enough between exposures that people have moved around in the scene. And therefore, in one shot, there'll be a person covering up part of the background. But in another shot, that same person will be in a slightly different position. And what we're going to do is mask these images to say, we're going to use this little part of one of the images in a different part of one of the others. And we're going to find all the parts where the background looks clean, even though we don't have a single photograph that shows the whole image as a clean view. So let's dive into Photoshop and see how that's done. All right, mine is done loading all the images. And if you look in my layers panel in Photoshop, you'll see one layer for each one of those pictures. If you had three images selected, you'll get three layers. In my case, it looks like I have, what, about 10. So the problem is I was shooting handheld. And so if I turn off the eyeball on the top layer and I stare at the image, you saw it move. And if I turn off the eyeball on the next layer, you'll see it move again. And that's just because I'm not holding the camera steady. So the first thing we need to do is get all of these images to line up. And the way we do that is I click on the topmost image to get it selected. I hold down the shift key and I click on the bottommost layer so that all the layers in between are selected. Then I can go to the edit menu and that's where I'm going to find a choice called auto align layers. And when I use it, I'm just going to use a setting called auto and I'll click OK. Now, if I go in and do the same test of turning off the eyeball on the topmost layer, you'll see the layer below perfectly aligns. I go to the layer below that, turn off its eyeball, and everything in general lines up. doesn't matter how many of these layers I turn the eyeball off on, it doesn't seem like the image moves around. 
Well, then what I should do is pick which image has the fewest people, which one ha is the cleanest looking. And to do that, what I would do is turn off the eyeballs on all but one layer. And there's a quick way of doing that. If you hold on the Option key, Alt and Windows, which I have held down right now, you can click where the eyeball should show up on any layer. And if you do, that means hide all layers except for this one. And if you also click on the name of that layer to make it active, then there's a keyboard shortcut you can use to switch between all your layers. If you hold down the Option key, which is Alt and Windows, and then use the square looking bracket keys. They're like little half squares. They're right above the return key on a Mac uh, US keyboard. I'm gonna type that and it's gonna switch to the next layer, which if you're on the topmost layer, will switch to the bottom. And then I'll type it again and again and again. If you just watch my layers panel, you'll see I'm simply cycling between which layers are there. Now that keyboard shortcut only works if you have a single layer visible and that layer happens to be the one that's active. If that's not the case, then it does something different. So I'm gonna make sure that's the case, and then I'll hold down the Option key, which is Alt and Windows, and use those brackets. And all I'm doing is cycling through these images to see if one of them in particular has the fewest people in it. And I think I saw one where the woman in the red up there on the left side wasn't in the frame, if I remember, right there. And so I think that one right there might be the best base image to start with, because there's the least work that needs to be done. Well, if that's the case, I wanna take that image, I'm gonna click on its name, and I'm gonna drag it to the bottom of my layers panel and let go, and then we'll build above it. Then let's pick another person in here. Let's say this guy here. What I wanna do is turn on these eyeballs one at a time until I find an exposure where he will be replaced with a clean background. Now he might be in the shot. He just might be standing up here higher or lower. So I'm gonna stare at that particular area. In fact, you could grab your finger and point at it on your screen or touch your screen to remember where it was. Then I'll turn on the first eyeball and no, we got people in the way. I'll turn that eyeball back off. I'll go to the next one. There we go. There it's clean where he used to be standing. So I'm gonna click on that layer that I just found that I turned on the eyeball and it gave me a clean area, and I wanna add a layer mask. But with a layer mask, you usually do that by clicking this icon down here. Usually, it ends up defaulting to keeping all that layer. And I might only wanna use the area where the guy was formerly standing. So I wanted to hide this layer to begin with. To do so, I'm gonna hold down the Option key, which is Alt and Windows, when I click the layer mask icon. What that does is it creates a black mask. In a black, in a mask, means hide this layer. And therefore, I'm seeing the original image that's underneath, and this layer is completely hidden due to a black mask. Then on the left side of my screen, I'm gonna choose a paintbrush tool. I'm gonna make sure I have a soft edge brush, and I'm gonna make sure my foreground color is white, because white in a mask makes the layer show up. So now I can come over here, and as long as I have a large enough brush, I can just come over here and paint where he is. And what I'm doing is I am causing the layer that I'm currently working on to become visible only where I paint. And we made sure that that was clean in that particular area. Now let's see if any other part of that layer could be used to potentially hide her or these guys. Well, there's a way to disable this mask temporarily. And if I do, this layer will be completely visible and we'll be able to see if there was a clean background here or over here in that layer. Because right now, all we're seeing is this little part that's been painted in white. That's the only part of this layer that's visible. So to do this, move your mouse over this mask, hold down the shift key on your keyboard and click. When you click, you see the big red X, that means you temporarily disabled the mask. When it's disabled, you're seeing the entirety of this layer. So I'll do that one more time, shift click. So I'm just gonna stare at where she is. I'll shift click and say, did she go away? Well, largely she did. Then I'll also look at these other guys and say, did they go away? Oh, they move quite a bit. 
So I think we could use a good portion of this layer. I'm just gonna go to where she is. I'm gonna paint with white. I just need to make sure that mask is active so the little corners are highlighted. If they're not, click on the mask. And I'm just gonna paint right here to make that layer visible. Now at a certain point, I think there were some people in there and this will get them to show up, but that's fine. And let's come over here and try these guys. Okay, there, but here they showed up and I don't want that to happen. So all I need to do is switch from painting with white, which makes this layer visible, to painting with black. And this little double arrow will, will switch them. And now I'm going to paint right over here to get rid of those people. But now I'm bringing those guys back. So I can switch this back and say, okay, fine, let this part of the layer show up. Well, there I think we'll need a different layer. So we'll need to use a different layer here and a different layer there. So let's see if we can find one. So let's stare at those two places and let's turn on the next layer to see if those areas become clean looking. Nope. Let's hide that layer at the next one. Nope. Next one. Mm, the one on the left side, uh, right over here. If you look at her, when I turn on this layer, that does become clean. So I'm going to use that layer. I'll click on the layer and again, I want a black mask. To get a black mask, I hold down the Option key, Alt and Windows, and I click on the Layer Mask icon. That means give me a black mask instead of a white one. Then with my paintbrush tool set up to paint with white, I'm going to paint right here where I think we had a clean area, and now we got rid of that person. We just have one person left to get rid of, and hopefully in one of these exposures, she wasn't standing there. Let's find out. Let's go from the next layer up. Nope, that's got somebody else standing there. So let's turn that one off, go one more up. Nope, still somebody standing there. One more up. Still, come on, get out of there. Next one up. Mm, I hope we have one more. There we go. We finally got her to be gone. So let's work on that top layer. And I'm going to come down here to my layer mask. And once again, option click on it. I'll click it in Windows to say hide this layer using a mask. Then with my paintbrush, painting with white, I'm going to say, let's bring the layer in only in this spot. There we go. And so now we've cleaned this up of tourists, but we can take it a little bit farther than this. But just so you know, if you really want to learn Photoshop and Lightroom and photography, be sure to check out mastersacademy.com. That's the whole reason I'm doing this video is to let you know that if you want to truly learn Photoshop, there you're going to find over 200 hours of me teaching Photoshop, Lightroom, and photography. But let's get back to it. All right, now I'm thinking about the border around this image. And I don't know if I want to crop it this tight. I like that I have this much space in front of this. And this isn't too bad, but I want to see if I can get a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is turn on these other layers and instead of paying attention to where the people were, I'm going to pay attention to the border to see if I can expand my view. So I'll turn on this layer that we hadn't used. And you notice on the left side of the frame, if I turn it off and back on again, it's expanding my view. So I might be able to get it where I don't have to cut off that windmill on the left side. But I don't want the people to come back. So I'm going to click on that layer and I'm going to do a black mask. That means holding down Option, Alt and Windows, and clicking on the layer mask uh, icon. Then I'll grab my paintbrush, painting with white, and I'm just going to paint it in over on the left side where it might be able to expand the range, the view of my picture. And it looks like it has a little bit more at the bottom, so I might as well paint it across that bottom portion. Although I see somebody showing up right there, so I'm gonna switch from painting with white to painting with black. That little double arrow does it, but you can also just type the letter X, which does the exact same thing as the double arrow. And now I'm hiding that layer, and I'll get rid of the guy. Then if I still wanna expand my view, I'm gonna try the other layers. I'm just gonna turn on the eyeball and look if the checkerboard goes away anywhere. And there, it doesn't really bring back all that much. In the upper left, there's the microscopic amount, but I don't think it's worth it. So let's go to the next one down. And that also does the corner, but it's not really giving us much more. Let's just see if there's any others. There I'm getting a tiny bit more on the left side of the picture, and it might be important. So I'm gonna use that one. Again, I'll get a black mask by option clicking on that layer mask icon. I need to make sure I'm painting with white. White means show up, and I'll let that show up on the edge, just in case it's useful. 
and I can simply continue doing it. There, we're expanding a good amount. So I'm gonna to go to this layer that I was just messing with its eyeball on. I'll do a black mask by option clicking on the layer mask icon. Again, painting with white. I'll just fill it in over there. Looks like there might've been a person standing there or something. We could retouch that out and I might get to that, we'll see. Uh, what I could do right now is try painting with black and see if that little part goes away or if that was where the extension was happening. Uh, it's where the extension was happening. I'll have to fix that later. All right, I'm just gonna continue doing that. Now that's gonna expand it much more. Do you see on the left side of the picture? So let's use that one. Option click on the mask, you get a black one. Again, paint with white and put it in so I can get a nice wide view. And since that filled in, I might not even need the layer above, which might get rid of that little part. No. So it looks like we'll need to keep it. All right, and then I can continue to see if there's any more. That would extend it at the bottom of the frame. If that's important to me, I'd have a black mask, option click. And then paint with white down here at the bottom. All I'm trying to do is get a wide view of my subject so I have more possibilities when cropping. Speaking of cropping, let's go to the crop tool. In the crop tool up here, I'm gonna turn off delete cropped pixels. And therefore, if I crop my picture, it'll keep anything that's beyond the edges in case I change my mind. And I'll pull in the various sides here to decide how I'd like to crop this picture. I might bring that up a bit. I see I got somebody's legs showing up there. And wherever it is, I think I'm gonna pull that a little bit closer so I don't got a little rock wall that's there. Now, when I'm moving this, it feels like it's snapping. I'm trying to put it precisely in a spot and it doesn't wanna go there. Well, if that's the case, while you're dragging, not before you drag, but while, hold on the control key. On Mac or Windows, that will prevent any snapping. And therefore, you can get it exactly where you want. And so I'm simply looking around here and deciding where I want it to be framed. Then since I have delete crop pixels turned off, this won't be permanent. I can press return or enter and decide how I want my cropping. But I notice with my cropping in the upper right, there's like empty space we need to fill in. But before we fill that in, look at my layers panel and notice there's a couple layers we never used. Well, those are just making our file larger than it needs to be. So you can go to the side menu on the layers panel by going to the upper right of that panel. And there's a choice there called delete hidden layers. And that'll throw away only the layers that have the eyeballs turned off. It'll warn you. I usually choose don't show again and say, yes, that's why I told you to. And then the only thing I'm concerned about right now is we have this little thing here, which might've been a pole in the actual scene. Is it, or is it some artifact? I can't tell. So I'm gonna try to figure out what layer it's in. All I'm gonna do is turn a layer off and back on again and see if that artifact goes away. There it is. It's part of this particular layer. It's just a sliver of those people. So let's click on that mask. And on a mask, black hides things. So I'm gonna grab my brush and I'm gonna paint with black. And I'm gonna say, let's try to get rid of that. Oh, it seems to be doing the opposite. So instead I'll paint with white and try. No, so what's going on here? If I turn this layer off, the people show up, and if I turn it on, they disappear. What that tells me is those people were probably staring at their cell phone for like five minutes, and they're just in more than one of these. So I'll go down to the next one, turn it off, there, it disappeared. That's the mask I wanna work on, and black hides things, so I'm gonna work with black, and I'm gonna fill that in. There, we fixed it. Now I'll type Command-0, Control-0 in Windows to zoom out, Let's see what else we might need to deal with. Well, we got that area in the upper right that's just empty. So once I've actually looked through this and made sure there is no weird artifacts to be found, I don't need to keep all these layers. My camera is 60 plus megapixels. So having this many layers makes a huge file size. Once I know I'm done merging those, I can just go to the layer menu and I'm gonna choose not flatten image, but I'm gonna choose Merge Visible. What's the difference? Well, Merge Visible is not gonna fill in the checkerboard that's in the upper right. Flatten image would make that checkerboard area in the upper right white. So I'll choose Merge Visible. Watch my layers panel. All those layers will combine together. 
Now, let's get this area up here to be filled in. To do so, I need that area to get selected, and there's a trick for doing so. There's a way to get all the areas of your image that are solid, that actually contain image, to be selected in any area that looks like a checkerboard to not be selected. And the way you do it is you hold down the Command key if you're on a Mac, Control if you're on Windows. And you go to your Layers panel, and you click on the little thumbnail picture that represents your layer. Let's give it a try. So in my Layers panel, I'm holding down the Command key right now, Control if I was in Windows. I'm going to move my mouse on top of this little thumbnail picture, and you'll notice that my mouse looks like it's got a selection on top of it, where if I let go of the Command key, it doesn't. So I'm going to hold on Command and click. We got our selection. Now I didn't actually need the picture itself to be selected. I need the area that looks like a checkerboard. So I'm going to go to the Select menu and choose Inverse. That gives me the opposite of my selection. All right. Then I need my selection to overlap the sky, not just kiss up against the edge of it. So to get it to be larger, I'll go to the Select menu I'll choose Modify, and there's a choice in here called Expand. That means make it bigger. And I'm going to type in 2, and I'll click OK. You probably won't be able to tell, but this selection now doesn't just kiss up against the blue sky. It overlaps it by 2 pixels. Then I'll go to the Edit menu, and I'm going to choose Fill, and I'm just going to use Default Settings. But just in case you've messed with the settings before, the defaults are Content Aware, and color adaptation with normal and 100%. I'll click OK, and that should be able to fill in the checkerboard. And it doesn't matter if that was a blue sky or if it was gravel or something else in a different corner of the picture, it should be able to figure out what should go there. And then I go to the Select menu and choose Deselect. So now we have a clean shot with no tourists in it. And all I had to do is take the shot I wanted and then wait a few seconds without moving. I just left my feet where they were and I waited for people to reposition themselves. And I'll take another shot. And I'm just patient. And I look at the various people in the shot and see when each one moves. Take another shot. And some people will be staring at their cell phones. And those are the most annoying. Because sometimes you have to stand there for like five minutes before you take another shot. Or if you don't have the patience to wait, then you have to get into retouching. But that's the subject of another lesson. I'm Ben Wilmore from Masters Academy, and I'll see you next time.